All right, so boom. If you have been keeping up with my channel, you would have known that I took a six week journey on listening to all five of Lil Wayne's The Carter albums. Out of all five albums, that was 89 songs I had to listen to. And I don't mean I played the song in the background while I was hooping or I just had it playing in the car. No, I mean I sat down and paid attention to the lyrics to all 89 of them. Because Wayne fans seriously never care about what he's rapping about. As long as the song has a nice beat and his flow is decent enough, that's all y'all need to call something fire. Now really quick, there's a song called Pooh Nanny Monster from the Carter 3. For those of you who don't like that song and think it's one of the worst, I'm sorry, but that's not on this list. That's because Pooh Nanny Monster was not on the original version of the Carter 3. It was a replacement for a song called Playing With Fire. A song that Lil Wayne removed from the album because it got him sued for copyright. So he took off playing with fire and put Punani Monster in his place. So since it wasn't on the original version, I just didn't bother listening to the song when I was making this list. But anyway, I would love for you guys to check out the top 10 best The Carter songs list as well. But without further ado, out of all 89 songs from the Carter series, let me show you guys what I think are the 10 worst ones. The Carter 3 is the most overrated album I ever heard in my life. And yes, I am so serious. Ever since that album came out, I have seen so much praise. People calling it the greatest Lil Wayne album, the best album of 2008, the best rap album of the 2000s decade in general. And that's not true at all. People only say that because of how much hype there was surrounding that album, because of all the mixtapes that were being released by that time. And also, this album is overpraised because of nostalgia. A lot of the people that are still going around calling this album flawless and saying it has no skips, they ain't listened to the album in a long ass time. They're just saying that because of all the memories they have with it. The Carter 3 is like Lil Wayne's equivalent to Eminem's Encore. And by that, I mean there are so many incredible songs and garbage songs on this one album. But unlike Encore, people ignore all of the bad songs and just say for the Carter 3, every song is incredible. The reason I'm saying all this is because Phone Home is one of the bad songs on the album. So you guys know how Wayne calls himself a Martian and says that he's from a different planet than everybody else because he's so different. He took that and made it into a tired song. And the name Phone Home is just a play on the movie E.T. Now the idea of the song is cool, but the execution was so piss poor. One of the obvious things that's wrong with it is the hook by Dre from Cool and Dre. Now I've talked about Dre before in my five songs I forgot were Dove's video. And I said how his performance on the song Brown Paper Bag is why I like this so much. But Phone Home is the complete opposite. His performance is one of the big reasons why I don't enjoy it. The screaming of Phone Home takes up most of the damn song. Wayne's verses are very short. Each verse is like 30 seconds other than the last verse, which is the worst one, but we'll get to that in a second. But since Wayne's verses are so short, you can literally blink when his verse starts and the next thing you know is back to the but in regards to Wayne's performance, he doesn't do that great on this song either. In the first verse, he has this like grocery shopping scheme where he says that he's in the supermarket and he has a shopping cart full of fake hip hop artists and he's going to eat all of their brains. Like The scheme is fine. I just don't like the delivery of it. Like I can get your brains for a bargain like I bought it at Target. Like it, it just makes the lyrics not hit for me because the delivery is so choppy. In the second verse, he started talking about him drinking lean, which like my nigga, like stop, stop doing that. And then he said this, like, I get bread like cold cuts, like cold cut sandwiches. Like that, that was what. Then the third verse is a combination of both whack lines and the delivery was whatever. Like I'm rare, like Mr. Clean with hair. I'm a bear, like black and white hair. So I'm polar. I don't even know what he's trying to say. Like I'm like a polar bear because I have black and white hair. Polar bears don't even have black and white hair. Their hair is black, it just looks white. I, I guess he knew that and he was just trying to be clever or he may have legit got them confused with panda bears. I, I, I don't know. This is that Lil Wayne that's confusing in a bad way. You just hear the lyrics and go like, what is this nigga talking about, man? So if you enjoy Phone Home, then I'm sorry. I just don't see how anybody can consider this a good song. Wayne's verses are pretty ridiculous. Dre is annoying as hell on the hook and it's easily one of the worst songs on the album. But <laughs> don't worry, <laughs> don't worry. This is definitely not the only The Carter 3 song on this list. John Legend is the only enjoyable thing about this song. Him being a good singer is actually why the track is only at number 9 and not lower. But when it comes to Wayne's performance, oh my goodness, this is the cheesiest shit you would ever hear in a love song. 
Okay, so in the good love songs that Wayne has, there are a few corny lines here and there, like comfortable with baby face, the whole beginning of the third verse. Hey, yeah, it's no sweat, no sweat. I will never one, two, three, forget about you, your love, your sex. And you know I work you out like both flex. Like, or even in How to Hate. And yes, I, I said How to Hate is one of Wayne's good love songs. I used to hate that song like everybody else. But other than a couple of cheesy lines here and there, the song is actually really good. But for that song, I mean lines such as, I don't love them hoes and don't fuck up with Wayne because when it wanes, it pours. Like, that line was horrible. <laughs> or, and all I had to do was put two and two together, but that just makes four, but not forever. So imagine lines like that, but it's the entire song. And that's what So Special is from the Carter Four. The first verse alone, Wayne started off with some nonsense. I talk shit, I hope it matters. We climax without the ladder. Can't desert the future, no Nevada. Her body is a weapon, rat tat tat tatter. I don't know what's the last time I heard so many garbage rhymes in one scheme. We both climb max without the ladder. Like climb ax since you climb a ladder. I can't desert the future, no Nevada. Here he's saying he doesn't want to abandon the future that him and the girl can have together. That's not bad in itself. It's the terrible wordplay behind it. So the wordplay is on the word desert, which also means desert. Like a desert and the reason he said nevada is because it's a state that has a ton of deserts so i can't desert desert our future because i'm not nevada this is some of the corniest shit that have ever come out of this man's mouth and then the last one's pretty obvious her body is a weapon i'm a rat tat tat tatter this entire song is filled with cheesy puns like this i put it together like a common denominator then i tear it up like loose leaf paper see we don't even know more we make love and now she's on the tip of my tongue my taste buds Cause she's my honey bee, yeah, buzz, buzz. And now I'm itching and scratching, that's that love bug. <laughs> Y'all seriously think I'm playing when I say I can go on all day with the terrible lines in this song? Weezy's performance was horrible on here. People really hate on how to hate and how to love all the time. All of you people that do that, I guarantee y'all have never bothered listening to So Special because this song is way worse than those. If you get past John Legend singing, you will see how whack this song really is. Let it fly like the birds in the sky, hotter than the weather in July. Yes, that's right. Let It Fly featuring Travis Scott. I think it's one of the worst songs from the Carter Five and one of the worst songs from the series, period. There are only three Carter Five songs on this list and Let It Fly is one of them. This song is super overrated to me. I have seen people call this a top five track from the Carter Five and I severely disagree with this. I think people were just hyping it up simply because it was a Travis Scott and Wayne collab and they don't have that many songs together. From a Travis Scott standpoint, this literally was just a typical throwaway Travis verse and him talking about women, money, drugs. We at the top in the they mix it alcohol and they touch it. There's nothing special about his verse at all. It's extremely basic. And then Wayne's performance on this song, y'all already know what I'm about to say. This line scheme that he had on the song was annoying as hell to listen to. The first like 80% of his verse, everything rhymes with a strong I, I sound. Rapping the same sound over and over isn't inherently bad, but I think it may come down to Wayne's voice on why it was so bad to me here. If you hear the song, you know exactly what I'm talking about already, but if you haven't, this is what Wayne's verse sounds like. It's alive, it's alive, I'm revived, it's C5, when the ride gets the sky, there's the time, please advise, it's advised to be advised, and we advise, me and mine. Body take a week to find, or cops gonna be like, never mind, what's on your mind, pistol to your mind, blow your mind, control your mind, mind, freak the sober mind. If you just got annoyed by me doing it, then imagine hearing Lil Wayne do it for 43 seconds. 43 seconds. 43 seconds actually takes a good while to go through. So hearing that, like rough edges like a box of check and fries, that's a line. Hearing that for that long of a time is such an ear grater. Like I always say, if you like this song, all power to you, but this song is a mess to me. Wayne's verse is a hot mess. Travis is extremely forgettable. The instrumental is okay. Like, no, nah, no, nah, this song is pretty weak. Now I know a lot of people love this song as a guilty pleasure. Like y'all are aware how corny the song is and y'all still enjoy it. That's perfectly fine because we can all admit how ridiculous that is. The thing that makes the song so bad is that everything in the song is like a pun about the police. Like Bobby V singing like, when I get up all in ya, we gon' hear the angels calling us. We can see the sunshine before us and when I'm in that thing, I make that body sing. And then he imitates the girl moaning like it's a police siren. That's where the whole wee 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 
second singing thing is. It's so ridiculous that it's actually funny, honestly. So in the song, Wayne talks about how he got pulled over by a lady police officer for speeding and that she was so sexy that it made Wayne start thinking like, damn, could I actually sleep with a police officer? And he ended up getting with her. He talks about like smashing her in a police car and that's pretty much the whole song. <laughs> now, as I mentioned, the amount of puns in this song is what bothers me and Wayne is like giggling throughout the song as if he knows how cheesy it is, but he chooses to rap about it anyway. <laughs> and after we got done, I said, lady, what's your number? She said 911. <laughs> and then he compares beating up her Poonani like with the cops beating up Rodney King. <laughs> like beat it like like a cop, Ronnie King, baby, yeah, beat it like a cop. <laughs> like he keeps laughing throughout the song because he knows how stupid this is. And then we have Kid Kid's old ass, but I never, I never cared about Kid Kid. He just seems like an old uncle, like trying to relive his glory days by still rapping. But this verse was just like uncalled for. According to him, he wasn't even supposed to be on this song. The third verse was supposed to be for two chains. But whatever, Kid Kid gets on the song and he tells the exact same story as Wayne, just way shorter and without the sense of humor. I'm Kid Kid, my face on every poster. Yeah, I'm wanted by every lady cop all over. Man, like, no, get him out of here. I could for sure do without Kid Kid on this song. So the last thing I'm gonna say about this song is honestly, I see why people enjoy it. I feel that like this is one of those so bad that it's good songs. If anyone genuinely thinks that this is a great track, then I would be surprised. But I'm sure most people would admit that it's pretty ridiculous and cheesy, but that's why they love it. So if you want to comment by saying like I'm tripping that this song should be on the list, like I I'll see why you'll say that. The song isn't completely horrible, which is why it's only at number seven. Mama said God took his time when he made me. Yeah, God took his time when he made me. This is the first song that I myself am very surprised is on this list. Took his time from the Carter Five, I used to think was a dope track until I listened to it. And hell no, nah, this song is not it. I will admit that the song doesn't get a lot of attention. Like other people may call it a hidden gem or a slept on track. If you ask me, the song doesn't deserve any attention because it's honestly not good. I'm going to start by saying the number one issue that this song has. <clears throat> The verses don't have anything to do with the meaning of the song. So Took His Time is about how Wayne's mother told him that he is someone special. Well, granted, all mothers say that about their children, but y'all get the point. She told him that he is so special, unique, and different from everybody else that she believes that God took his time when creating Wayne, which is why the chorus is, Mama said God took his time when he made me. So you would think that he's going to spend the song like proving his mother's point, talking about what makes him different from others hell no he doesn't do any of that he spends both verses of this song rapping the exact same generic stuff that Dwayne michael carter always talks about women guns having money there is no new twist no new subject matter he spends the entire song talking about the same stuff you could have easily heard from another Lil wayne song in the first verse he talks about smoking drinking having guns how the people closest to you can be snakes. Like, like I said, things he's rapped about a million times before. Then look at this part. Thrasher sweatshirt, Vans on, all the bitches hands on. Fuck your bitch for a Sam's car, a SIM car, and an Android. Th this is what this song consists of. That I had sex with your girl for a Sam's car, a SIM car, and an Android. Like this is just stupid. I don't want to hear about uh, it's, it's the flow and the rhyme scheme, bro. Like, no, this song is very lazy. He then talks about how all the girls that you mess around with are in the dun zone. Meaning that so many guys that ran through them that they out of commission at this point. And all of the girls that Wayne has are in the fun zone. Like so fun that they swallow all of his unborns and tell him that it tastes like a love song. If God took his time to make you Wayne, then he took his time in the sense of he procrastinated his ass off. He let you sit there for ages before he was finally like, all right, all right, all right, dang. Let me let me get back to this Dwayne Michael Carter person. Let me get him out the way. The second verse is the exact same nonsense. He, he talks about having a girl that's beautiful, but she's very selfish and she only talks to him because she wants news from him. And he comes from a place where people are ruthless and they just kill each other. Lil Wayne in general is barely ever a cohesive rapper. Like most of his songs are really just a bunch of random freestyle lyrics over a beat. But he has his times where he can create a minute to a song and it'll turn out to be incredible. Like, have y'all heard Dr. Carter from the Carter 3? That was a wonderful song meaning, and Wayne did a great job with the execution. This song, however, had a great meaning, but he completely ruined it by rapping about a bunch of nothing. Wayne spent the entire song rapping about a bunch of generic stuff that he always raps about with no new twist or style. If I was to ever make a bad song with good meanings video, took his time with, without a doubt, be on that list. And y'all are just some tourists. Give me three wishes. I wish, I wish, I wish you would, bitch. Now, I didn't even know that this song existed before I started listening to all the Carters. I had no idea that this song was even in this universe. And after listening to it, 
I'm glad I never heard it before. This song is boring as fuck. So the track features Jadakiss and Drake. And Jadakiss has the best verse without question, even though he kind of promotes selling drugs. <laughs> he pretty much tells all the hustlers out there that there is no salary cap or collective bargaining agreement in a drug game. So you should make all the money you possibly can. Then he also talks about how he's been had enough money to move out the hood, but he chooses to stay because he believes that the streets need him. And about how he started taking care of his friend Alberto's son because Alberto got locked up. His verse is fine, but Jada's delivery is so like dull and boring and it honestly drags on. This is how Jada like always raps, which is why I'm not calling it bad. But for this particular song, it didn't really make for an interesting opener. He raps very dry until Drake shows up. Speaking of Drake, this nigga spent his entire verse talking about Lil Wayne. He barely spoke about himself. The whole verse was dedicated to Wheezy. Like at the start, he says how Wayne is angry at new rappers who don't have the heart and are content with the position they have. But he said this with the most runoff flow possible. Pardon another, please pardon my brother. He's just angry at you niggas who don't. Like, I don't like how he sped up his flow like that just to catch up to the beat. It sounded terrible. Mine in one place, harder than another. Please bar in my brother. He just angry at you niggas who don't have your heart in this rap shit. <laughs> it's like, it's like that, that's not the move. Then he brings up Wayne's like, prison bid on Rikers Island and says that at least there were some bad bitches working in the prison, which is something that Wayne said himself, that like some of the women employees at the jail was like hella fine and someone was actually trying to talk to him. But then Drake ends the verse by saying there are so many kids rapping and they think that they have the game figured out but now that wayne has been released from prison he about to show everybody how it's done now i already know some of you are saying like you don't say anything bad about this song and i get why you say that and that's why one of the first things i mentioned is that this song just bores the hell out of me jada was lyrically fine he just had a pretty forgettable delivery and drake was just slurping up wayne in his entire verse speaking of wayne his verse wasn't hype for me either he mentions how he's finally happy that he's released, so he's about to show everyone why he belongs on the top of the rap game. But he didn't really do anything crazy throughout the whole verse. The one line he said that was cold was the two Glock 40s nigga, now you got 80 problems. Like, that was nice. Everything else was just like, all right, is there anything else interesting you want to tell us? Like, he was saying brand new poo nanny, poo nanny good as baby powder. Swimming in the money, I'ma need goggles. I know you fake nigga, pressure breaks niggas, I'll take you out, that's a date nigga. I think you poo nanny cat <laughs> hello kitty i just throw the alley-oop to drake griffin nigga i'm straight but my girl a potato on the barrel pop pop potato salad like i understand that many of you are going to say you don't think this is a bad song but there is absolutely nothing about this song that's entertaining for me generic beat all three rappers on it just spit generic boring verses out of all 89 songs this one strike me so much because of how just unentertained i was while listening to it this song is a complete throwaway and the low amount of entertainment value is what makes it one of the worst songs to me first rest in peace to static major now this is the most popular lil wayne song of all time the amount of people who didn't even know or didn't give a damn about Wayne before this song came out is ridiculous. The Carter 3 made Lil Wayne a superstar, but it was specifically this song that skyrocketed him to way more fans. But y'all already know how I am when it comes to people who try to correlate sales with quality. Oh, I ain't trying to hear none of that. I ain't trying to hear none of that. I'm not trying to hear none of that. I don't care nothing about it. I don't want to hear how successful the song is. The, the song sucks. Now, I will admit that the singing on the chorus from Static Major is enjoyable. The beat is nice and his singing goes well with it. That's the only positive thing I can say about this song. Unfortunately, also for Static Major, he has the most annoying verse in this song. His singing went from good to horrible in my opinion. After you break it up, then stop Drop it like it's hot. Like that, that shit was a mess. And for Wayne, almost everything he did on the song gets on my nerves. Like one, I don't like his background vocals on this song. Y'all know how he be trying to like harmonize and he like holds out the last syllable every word. Like lick me like it, like Yeah, baby. Oh yeah, I like that. Wow. Like this whole song, like he's in the background making those ah sounds and it's so annoying. Like his verses seriously don't make up for it. His verse on this song is very screechy and his lines are just stupid. And so I told her back it up like burp, burp. And I made that ass jump like jerp, jerp. Like, like y'all might think I ask for too much when it comes to music, but I really, really don't. A song can have a simple topic and still be dope. 
Like a simple turn up party song can be better than a song where the artists were trying to be serious. Like for example, Get Money featuring T-Pain, I think is a way better song than Nightmares of the Bottle. So I know Wayne wasn't trying to create anything like spectacular with this song, but this shit is still just not good to me. Other than Static Major's single on the chorus, this song is pretty annoying. The meaning of it is ridiculous, Wayne's background vocals. Man, I already told y'all everything about the song that I think is bad. So let's just move on to the top three. Now, even though there are only three songs from the Carter 5 on this list, the gap between the quality of them is very large. I think that Took His Time and Problems are the two worst tracks from the Carter 5, but Problems is way worse. First things first, this hook is atrocious. If loving me is wrong, I don't wanna be right, then bitch you hate me. If loving me is wrong, I don't wanna be right, then bitch you hate me. Like this terrible delivery leads into the verse too. Off button, pause button, stop button, lock button, belly button, big old titty, she pop buttons, head button. <laughs> like that's how this whole song sounds. The song meaning in general is Wayne talking about the pros and cons of being a millionaire i.e. the problems of being a rich nigga but i'm pretty sure rich doesn't cause you to make a trash song like this like he talks about how one piece of jewelry he has like gets jealous when he buys another piece he has a girl that sends him naked pictures at five in the morning then he says how he can overcome any obstacle in his way in order to get money by saying that if there's a fork in the road, he's going to metaphorically take the fork out and eat with it. Also, this song has kind of a lazy like second verse. The second verse is 40 seconds long. 27 out of that 40 seconds is just reusing the end of the first verse. It's the exact same lines. So both verses are pretty much the same cookie cutter lyric. But one thing he did at the end of the second verse, he started rapping like he was falling asleep. It's honestly kind of funny, but still ridiculous. So Problems is a very generic, I'm richer than the rest of these other people out here type of song. And the biggest problem with it is his delivery. It's the same whining and crying that he was doing on Lollipop. It's just a lot of, you loving me is wrong, I don't want to be right throughout the whole song. And this is without a doubt, the worst song from the Carter Five. Hey, so um, all of you people that say the Carter 2 is fire from beginning to end and it doesn't have a single skip, y'all are getting super carried away. The Carter 2 is loaded with skips. Almost half of the album is skips in my opinion. Now, this depends on what your definition of a skip is. For me, a song is a skip if it's flat out bad, obviously, or a song that is decent but just pretty boring and there's nothing special about it. The Carter 2 has 19 songs on it. Nine out of those 19 are skips to me. The total of bad songs and songs that are just okay to where they're pretty boring, yes, nine out of 19 are skips. But even with that, Wheezy Baby is the first and only song on this list from the Carter 2. The album is half skips and bloated, but Wayne ended up making songs that were a lot worse later on in the series. So Wheezy Baby stands alone as the absolute worst from the album. So I have spoken about Wheezy Baby before in my five times rappers while shine by singers video. And literally everything I said in that video is why this song is so bad and it's still true to this day. The song is about how Wayne doesn't want people to call him just Wheezy. You have to say the full name Wheezy Baby, which is why his moniker is Wheezy F Baby, please say the baby. He took that and made an entire song out of it. Now, my issue with this song is that Wayne's ad libs are super obnoxious. After every like three words, he says something in the background. And just like I said in the old video, like throughout the whole song, between every line, you could just hear him like, ah, uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, ow, uh, we see, uh, like the whole fucking song is like that. It's no different here. Brim leaning, yeah, cup tilted, yeah, blunt flicking, get money, fuck bitches, young Weezy, ow, young pimpin', she love it, yeah. Y'all think I'm over exaggerating, but I'm seriously not. This is the entire song. In both verses, he does this exact thing. After every few words, it's a, oh, yeah, yeah, wheezy, bow, holla. Listen to the song for yourself and you'll see how obnoxious it is. Even without the ad libs, he doesn't talk about anything on this song. Yeah, I'm slick as an old Mac. I'm slick as a Prozac. The Carter 1 was the dick for you hoes trap. This is the Carter 2 and this is the ball sack. And then going back to the meaning of the song, it's only mentioned during two parts of the whole song. The chorus, which is sung by Nikki Jean, she did a nice job. And then the very last line of the very last verse is, 
Weezy F baby, please say the baby. If not, don't you mother say it at all. And then that's it. That's the whole song. Over four minutes of annoying ad libs, very lazy lyrics, and him getting renegated by the feature artist. Like I said earlier, people love to act like every song from the Carter 2 is great, and that's not true in the slightest. The album has a lot of skips on it, and some songs that just flat out suck. And Weezy Baby is garbage to me. The second worst song in the entire series. That part that I played just now as the sample to introduce the song is the only thing I enjoy about this song. I've told you guys before that I love chopped and screwed vocals, so that started out hustling, it ended up bowling. Like, I love that part. The rest of this song is impressively bad. So apparently this instrumental was supposed to be on the Shrek the Third soundtrack. Yes, seriously. Someone at DreamWorks contacted David Banner and asked him to create a beat for the movie. So if you ever wonder why the song has those childish vocals of la, 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 that's why. David did that on purpose because it was meant for a kid's movie. But what happened was David came across Lil Wayne and he played the La La beat for him and Wayne said, like, yeah, nah, bro, like th this beat is mine. Shrek ain't getting this, this thing with me. And the rest is history. Wayne kept the beat for himself made a song over it and put it on the Carter 3. Horrible fucking decision. On this song, Wayne was just like joking around and just like making jokes with his lyrics by purposely making them bad. Like his bars were stuff like hip hop addict, hip hop addict. Man, I swear I'm on top like an addict. Yeah, bitch, I'm be with my dog like Shaggy. We stay clean, but we get dirty like Harry. I'm richer than Nicole and I'm a lion like her daddy. Like get it, like Nicole Witchy. A Lionel Richie. The first half of Wayne's verse is like this. Like he tells the listener that he's about to stop trying to be funny when he says this line. Nigga write a parody, but I ain't telling jokes. Apparently. After that line, he got more serious. Started talking about how he'll hurt anyone who tries to hurt his daughter and says that he's richer than other people because he has a bank full of pride. Now, other than the end of the verse, none of this worked for me. This is one of those times where I understand that the rapper had whack bars on purpose, but nah, man, th this this isn't funny. Very similar to Heat by Eminem. It actually makes it worse because the artists were trying to be funny and they're not good at it. But what makes this song way worse are the features. This song wouldn't even be on this list if it wasn't for these two. Briscoe and Busta Rhymes. I don't even know who the hell Briscoe is. I don't really care. But hearing lines like, my paint bubblicious, the motor so vicious, the rims look the same color as the wrapper of a Kisses, Hershey's, or I'm fly like a pigeon, I'm higher than gas prices. Like, I'm sure I'm missing out by absolutely nothing by not listening to this man's music. And then comes Buster, who just dragged this song down further and further into the hole. See, I ain't going nowhere, bitch. You know a nigga been home, honey? Money, f call it down syndrome money? Like, I don't, I don't have to explain this. He started talking about how people follow him with cameras as if he's having sex with Halle Berry and that he has so much money that he can have sex with women that look just as good as Janet Jackson. Like Busta literally adds nothing to this song. Usually Busta is very like comical and like humorous with his lyrics, but this whole song is just stupid. Like I said, he added nothing to the song, but then again, like ain't nothing to add because the song wasn't good to begin with. The only nice parts of the song are the end of Wayne's verse and the started out hustling, ended up bowling. There is a song called La 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 from the Drought Is Over 2 mixtape. That song is much better and did this song named Justice. But the la 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 from the Carter 3 is horrible. And in my opinion, the worst song from the entire The Carter series. 